afternoon and welcome again to the big match. We've given Brian a day off again, as we always do at Christmas. You fools, you've got me back again. I've got two of the lads to help me on the show. Two very well-known faces, everybody knows them. There's Rodney Marsh. I see you got dressed up and your hair's done especially again, Rod. Yeah, how are you? Nice to see you again. Both of you, it's nice to see you. Not both of us, there's only one yeah. here. Yeah. Okay. What about you? Oh, I'm introducing you. What about you, and then there's Mr. TV himself, Hello, sir. Terry Venables. This year he's come with his eyebrows. Thank you very much, my boy. Mind you, I'll tell you what, you get me out of bed last minute, he turns up with no socks. What's it all about? Well, well, he, said, he, he, said, he said to me, if he's not going to wear a hat, I won't wear his socks. <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't buy a curly hat. They said come, <laughs> said, come casual. No, Terry really, Terry has stepped in at very short notice. In fact, I had to drag him out of the club at four o'clock this morning. <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> <laughs> club foot. Seriously, he's here because Malcolm McDonald missed his play from Newcastle this morning. Still talking. As usual, the big match have got three tremendous games. There's Chelsea against West Ham, and that will be followed by Grimsby against Charlton and Newcastle against Leeds United. Later on in the show, we have Where Are They Now? And you are guaranteed some hilarious jo joviality and also one of those famous fun spots. But now let's get on with the football, and it's Chelsea against West Ham as we join Brian Moore. Well, thank you, Terry. The fellow there doing me out of a job. As we say welcome to Stamford Bridge for this derby game between Chelsea and West Ham. Chelsea having bucked up a little with two successive wins against Luton and Carlisle, but still very much in the relegation area. And West Ham, who've lost only one of their last 15, and by far London's most successful side. Prospects of a quality game with plenty of attacking football. Let's first of all catch up on the two teams, though, and Chelsea are unchanged, and that can't have happened too often this season. Young Ray Wilkins at eight is one to watch. As for West Ham, they've had to make a change in their attack. Billy Jennings is out. He's not really been fully fit for a couple of weeks now. So West Ham have John McDowell in the number seven shirt and Clyde Best, who scored twice in this corresponding game last season, is the substitute. Also watch out today for a new role for the uh, Scottish World Cup player, David Hay. Now slotting into the back four alongside Mickey Droy and doing a good job for Chelsea. And certainly there's versatility in the West Ham side as well, where John McDowell has lately moved up from fullback to a skillful midfield position with a good shot on him as well. So there we are, there are the preliminaries. The crowd at Stamford Bridge now waiting for the start. So referee Robert Perkin from Stafford then waits to get this game underway. Chelsea will be attacking the goal on our left in the all-blue strip with white stockings. West Ham today in the all-white strip with light blue stockings. And here's Keith Coleman for them. McDowell back to lock. In so many ways, West Ham's revival started on this ground last Boxing Day when they were 2-0 down and went on incredibly to win by four goals to two. They were 21st in the table then. They saved themselves and really built on the, the success of the last spring to take themselves into sixth position in the uh, first division this season. A goal kick to Chelsea. As I say, they won their last two games against Luton and Carlisle. And indeed, they've not been beaten here at Stamford Bridge since September. John Phillips, Welsh international goalkeeper, has really been vying with Peter Bonetti for the first team spot at Chelsea this afternoon. Looks so he's got an under vest on as well. It uh, could be a bit chilly out there, very blustery. Well, that goes to Patton. Brookings made a run for him and Patton couldn't quite reach him. Off Hay. Patton with the throw. Robson. And now Patton. Robson again. Brought down just inside that area, but uh, no foul, said the referee. And here's Hutchinson to take the running up for Chelsea. Wilkins going on outside him. Harris steaming up behind him. Still with Wilkins. He's done well. Hay linking up nicely. Brought down, and I think certainly nothing malicious or too menacing about that challenge by Coleman. Hay fell over his legs, and it had to be a free kick, though. Shot by Kemba, oh, just hitting the top of that West Ham crossbar. Swerving a little bit maybe in the breeze, and it's a blustery one. And Day didn't get a fingertip to it, and luckily for West Ham, it just clipped the top of that crossbar from Steve Kemba. Brooking, yes, that was hit rather powerfully for him, and he couldn't uh, cushion it quite enough on his chest. Wilkins to Harris. 
was John Hollins who'd advanced from the middle of the field. Hutchinson now for Chelsea. Kemba's right in there too. Here's Kemba. Free kick. Right on the edge of the box. Now this could uh, present some danger for West Ham. The wall has got to be formed properly, and certainly on the big match once or twice at West Ham this season, we've seen how uh, they themselves have pierced opponents' walls. Now they're facing some of that music themselves. There's the West Ham wall. Taylor there, very animated. Hey, the Chelsea figure in the middle of it. And West Ham will want to get him out of the way. Day also will want to look at it. Hollins driving it through the wall. A magnificent save by Day. hit that superbly and Day answered the challenge perfectly so a corner then to Chelsea Cook will take it Kemba's made a run towards the near post and Garland was right in there too Wilkins trying to turn it back Lampard heading it away but only to Charlie Cook Hollins McDowell lost that in the air, Kemba found it and he's found Cook and again West Ham really being pressurised just around their own penalty area Garland there, well West Ham let that go so far and Garland couldn't quite catch it properly what of an hour gone, no score Ham's throw. Brooking again. Now Cook. Yes. A rather savage attack from behind by McDowell on Cook. The referee at the moment missing nothing. Shorter haircut. And Cook heading it on that time towards Garland. And Coleman thought about the pass back, but uh, Garland was in the way, so Chelsea get another throw. And Hutchinson is on hand for the long one, but Charlie Cook decided he'd take it himself. Wilkins. Bonds heading it away. Brookie. Neatly getting his way past Harris. And here's the pass from McDowell now. West Ham really a tremendous counter thrust by them across the face of the goal. And Gould is on the far side. Oh, and it went right back across the face of the goal again before Robson could turn it in. And Brooking was right there too. Just couldn't find the, the extra half yard or so that it needed to get it in. Keith Robson there. Lampard nodding that one away to Wilkins, but here's Hutchinson again. Wilkins floated on nicely for Locke. Now can Locke get this one across for Chelsea? It's a throw. And the number 10 going across again. And so it's another Ian Hutchinson special. And Mickey Droy right in there, the big number five. He's probably the fella he'll aim for. And in fact, it's Droy who gets a header to it. Not in there. And somehow just over the bar by Garland. Well, Droy did so well for Chelsea, getting in there a valuable header. And it looked odds on that Garland would be able to turn it in. And instead of that, it just plopped over that West Ham crossbar. And we stay at nil-nil. Mervyn Day coming out there and losing that ball in the air to Droy. So the Hutchinson long throw nearly worked again, and here's Hutchinson leaving it for Kemba. Garland, Kemba, beautiful aggressive play again by Chelsea, Kemba, oh, what a fine save, and Hutchinson couldn't quite turn it in. But still Chelsea are keeping up this pressure with Harris. Played on for Charlie Cook. And Bonds happy to get it away anywhere. Robson, Brooking, played on this time for Gould. And Troy winning it in the air, and West Ham can have time now to draw breath and take a throw.
great save again by Day. Brilliant running through by Kemba. And Clyde Best has stripped off and, in fact, looks as though he's coming on. Now, who's going off? Billy Bonds is going across that way. And I think Billy Bonds is going off the field. I thought for a moment he might be going across just for a consultation there with John Lyle, you can see on the left of our picture. But Billy Bonds, the inspiration of West Ham, is off the field. I didn't see him injured, whether he wasn't fully fit when this game started. But he is off, and Clyde Best is on. Played in for Garland. And now for Charlie Cook. This time he's got it in quickly and straight to Day. And Garland's feet were rather high there, genuinely going for the ball, I think. And Taylor and Garland getting in there, and Hutchinson pushing Taylor away. And I think Taylor will be very lucky to get away with... Uh, without at least having his name taken there. And Garland saying, what on earth were you playing at? Certainly Garland's feet were high, but I'm uh, convinced in my own mind that that was a genuine attempt for the ball as Day went in for that early cross from Cook. But Taylor felt that it was uh, a little unfair on goalkeeper Mervyn Day. And into the book they go. Certainly it was quite a buffeting for Mervyn Day there, but not for a moment did he take his eye off the ball, and uh, credit to him for that. In fact, it was the first time that Charlie Cook had really got an early cross in, and uh, it looked as though it could cause West Ham all sorts of trouble if he could continue to do that. And Gould versus Gary Locke, and Locke finding Cook. Good control there by Cook. Killed that ball beautifully. And then showed a little too much of it to McDowell. And then McDowell losing it to Kemba. Here's Cook again. Best doing very well. Padden now to Robson. Beautifully taken by Robson. But before he can go on, the whistle has gone. For half-time, a really competitive first half, as you'd expect in a London derby game. And no thoughts, really, that Chelsea are in such trouble near the foot of the table. They've carried this game and the fight to West Ham. They've hustled them all the way and given West Ham no chance at all to settle. A lot to come still on the big match this afternoon. Mervyn Day has made a couple of tremendous saves. But in spite of uh, all that attacking aggression, particularly from Chelsea, a goal is first half. A half-time score then at Sanford Bridge. Chelsea nil, West Ham nil, and we'll be right back with the second half. So welcome back then to Stamford Bridge, 0-0, and Chelsea now attacking the goal to our right, which is just what they're doing at this moment, although Taylor and uh, Coleman between them getting it away from Hutchinson. Goal turning it on towards Clyde Best. A flick there by Best behind Keith Robson. There in the spectacles, telling Dempsey what he wants. What I imagine they'll probably do is they'll put Dempsey alongside Droy and release Hay to the middle of the field. So no disrespect to John Dempsey, but uh, Kemba have looked the outstanding player for Chelsea so far this afternoon. Oh, McDowell lost out on that one and Hollins was quick to pounce. Here's Garland. Oh, both sides intent at the moment on giving the ball away but here's Brooking giving it to teammate Graham Padden Padden shot oh and that was curling all over the place and nearly caught Phillips out hit with great power there by Padden Phillips going one way and had to readjust very quickly so it stays at 0-0 Lampard Hollins with the interception West Ham get the throw oh well he's given it to uh, 
Chelsea. Well, that is an incredible decision. That is an incredible decision by the linesman. Mr. Hoff of Poole. Cook. And there's Harris linking up. Hutchinson right in there, and Dane right in there too. And that could so easily have been a goal, stemming in fact from what I would have thought was the wrong decision by a linesman. Here's Locke though. Hollins again. That's a better looking one. Dempsey was right in there too. It's got to be a long one, they decide in the end for me and Hutchinson. Well, it very nearly produced a goal for Chelsea in the first half. Will it produce one for them now? Oh, and Day was in trouble. Oh, good heavens. Kicked away by Kevin Locke. And Dempsey put it straight back, or rather Hay put it straight back from one number six to the other into the arms of Mervyn Day. That's a long kick, and Dempsey was underneath it, and Hollins was supporting him. And here's the pass now for Wilkins. Best really streaking back there after Wilkins, but it's Coleman who finally does the tackling work. Garland. There's his cross coming in. Oh, my goodness! Yes! And Kevin Locke, the man in the picture there, knows that he had a hand in it as well. Because as that uh, cross came over from the left, from Garland, Locke sliced it, Mervyn Day somehow miraculously got his hands to it, pushed it against the crossbar. As it came down, there was nothing he could do about it, as Ian Hutchinson turned it in to put Chelsea 1-0 into the lead. Chelsea 1, West Ham 0. A goal that Chelsea, I think, deserved. Carried the fight so well to West Ham all afternoon. They've shown more aggression, particularly in the middle of the field with Hollins and when he was on Kemba. Now McDowell playing it in towards the wall there. Now this is the sort of occasion when West Ham, one, are going to miss the inspiration of Billy Bonds in the middle of the field and the striking power of Billy Jennings upfield. Nice one on this side of the field flagging. Got the referee waving play on, and it's going to be another long throw for Ian Hutchinson. It's almost a hum of expectancy in the crowd every time Hutchinson tries one of these long throws, and I'm sure that there are a few flutters in this West Ham defence now. Twice in this game he's nearly got through for a goal. And there's another massive throw. And Day not getting to it. And hey! So yet again, Hutchinson nearly causes confusion, or does cause confusion, and nearly produces a goal. Hayes header well stopped in the end by Day. Padden. There's aggression winning there for him. And his pass finding Clyde Best. Can Best get by Troy? It's another corner. Certainly West Ham coming forward with uh, much more aggression now themselves since they conceded that goal. But still seeming, at this moment at any rate, to be a long way from scoring that equaliser. Chelsea really at the moment having the measure of them in defence. But here's Patton with another corner for West Ham. Towards Tommy Taylor. Towards Keith Robson, and grabbed just at the end there by John Phillips. And Robson in a little bit of trouble in that goal mouth with Harris and Droy. But what do they expect? Uh, players really have to go for a ball in that sort of situation. I think uh, Droy was saying that his feet were high. But what Chelsea should have been worrying about was how high his head was. Rookie. Patton. Robson. 
Back for Patton again. Hit first time by Kevin Locke. Should be no trouble for Phillips. He's had to come a long way for it. And McDowell is right in there and he couldn't quite get his shot in. That just wouldn't fall quickly enough. In fact, it didn't go quite as deep as uh, Phillips thought and he had to come all the way. And then when he didn't get it, it left a goal that was pretty vacant. Except that McDowell couldn't quite get in the shot that would count. So Brooking taking this corner for a change. for Coleman. Curling again, Bobby Gould is right there. And Gould is equalised! 1-1, one, one, and Bobby Gould has done it. He's been kept quiet for so long in this game. But when that chance came, Gould made absolutely no mistake. He had time to take it on to his right foot and really whack it past Phillips to make it 1-1. One, one. Chelsea won... West Ham won. Seven minutes to go. And now we really could have a finish. Well, that must sicken Chelsea, who looked the more dominant side for so long, and for whom two points are absolutely precious in their fight to get away from the relegation area, and looked for so long as though they'd give nothing away. But now it's all square. And if anything, the pendulum will swing West Ham's way with the uh, scoring of that goal. Patton then with the throw. Best. Patton. And now Lampard. That'll go back to Locke. And then today. Robson, Lampard beaten by Hay, but Robson's up there again. And Locke can turn it away to Charlie Cook. Cook for Hollins. Booking right in there, and Hollins going right through with that challenge and doing well. And here's David Hay for Chelsea. Played on for Charlie Cook. Garland and Hutchinson are in the middle. Garland is there. Is that a penalty? No, it looked like a push on Garland. But the referee thought no. Now it's Wilkins. And in they go again, but offside both Hutchinson and Garland. And West Ham can breathe again. Rain beginning to sweep across Stamford Bridge. Best underneath this one, but not really getting a clear header to it. And Cook will turn it back for Gary Locke. Oh, and there was a misunderstanding there, but play on, and the referee was right, because the ball was inside the area when Phillips grasped it. If it had been outside, of course, it would have been a handball and a free kick. A throw to West Ham. Played nearly a minute of injury time. and over his head. Gould right in there again. Still with Bobby Gould right in there again and Droy will turn this one back but the whistle had gone and that's all over and it's one point apiece. Chelsea I suppose will feel just a little saddened by that who'd had uh, perhaps more of the game than West Ham. Bobby Gould's equaliser though robbing them of the two points after Ian Hutchinson had put Chelsea into the lead. So honours even and a final score line then at Stamford Bridge that reads Chelsea won West Ham won, and now back to Terry Mancini, to Rodney Marsh. And of course, Terry Venables. It was a pretty tough game yesterday, and I suppose both sides will be satisfied with a point. And I think, first of all, we ought to have a look at the two goals. Now, what do you think of the first goal, Rod? Not that. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I by your standards. I'm yeah, not... I think it's, um, it's a very bad mistake by the, by the, the fullback, I think, there. Letting him, in, letting him come inside him for a start. Mervyn Day does terrific to get the ball out. In fact, he's looking the best keeper in England at the moment. I think he's looking magic. You he's think playing. the fullback should have uh, forced him outside, do you? Yeah, well, and yeah. yeah. And he's actually away well. Yeah, he stuck it away very well. Yeah. Tremendous. Stuck it away well. But I think um, the, the cross was one of those goals that if you concede it, it's, it's a 
very bad for you? You're not, yeah. you're not happy with that sort of go against you? No, 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 no. He should have been cleared by Kevin in the first place. No, well, I think the fullback actually. I mean, Especially when the fullback's got no cover in that instance, I think he's got to force, force him out him wide. Out, yeah. Yeah. So therefore, it's yeah. got to be a higher cross, which gives the goalkeeper a little bit more time yeah. to see what he's going to do and, and make his decision. Yeah, it well, gives we him don't a fraction know exactly of a longer to, what to sort make of skill decision. that uh, the fellow had to beat Coleman with. Anyway, what about the second goal, the equalising goal for um, uh, West Ham? Yeah. What do you think of that? Let's have a look here, eh? <laughs> <laughs> good, good headed clearance there by Mickey Droy. Got plenty of yeah. distance on it. I think the manager would be very upset about this. So the team, yeah. I should think. I mean, yeah. look at what... Hutchinson's, Hutchinson's not coming out of there. Yeah, well, what, what, what's happened there, obviously, that... Um, this is a tricky one, actually. On a corner, if you, it's hard to decide what's a good clearance and a bad clearance. If yeah. it's a bad one, you've got to stay. Yeah. Now, was, although Rodney said he got a lot of power, or yourself said he got a lot of power, yeah. he didn't get a lot of height on it. Again. No, no, no. So therefore, he wasn't able. they weren't able to come out as a unit. Most of them come, but I think Hutchinson, being a forward, I think that he wasn't aware, as yeah, a defender they, would they be, look, coming out. They, they would looked be. drilled to come out, didn't they? They looked yeah. as though they wanted to come out. Yeah, but yeah. as I say... One, if one player stays, it's suicide, isn't it? Yeah, yeah well, as I say, him, him not being a defender, he wasn't quite sure what to do. In the end, in actual fact, he made a, a very good challenge. It was a bit unfortunate yeah. not to get there, I thought. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll go back now and have a look at some of Ian Hutchinson's throws, because they put uh, West Ham in a lot of trouble yesterday. Yeah. And we'll just go through them and see what you think of those. He gets a hell of a lot of distance and power than them. Yeah, I was, we were just saying, actually, that, that we've never seen him throw a ball this far away from home. And uh, apparently Gordon Jago said that they change the balls during throw-ins. <laughs> <laughs> and well, uh, I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. that. No, no, you no, can't say that, Rod, that's really, a, that's because... Um, a very valid point, they reckon that... Well, um, how about in the cup final, when they played Leeds in the cup final yeah. in Manchester? No, no, hang boy on. threw the ball No, Gordon Jago, Gordon Jago said that at Chelsea, when the ball goes out for a throw-in, they throw back another ball that's a light ball. <laughs> and he can throw it. No, it's true. It's absolutely true. I mean, look at this. You can see it gets them in a lot of trouble, actually, these long Yeah, hell of a lot of trouble. Uh, Chelsea are prepared to put a lot of people in the box because they're aware of... You know, you yeah. can see, in actual fact, a change of attitude from defenders. They're a lot more uh, panic-stricken, I think, because they're, they're so close to their own goal. Panic sets in, and I think that they don't know whether their goalkeeper's going to come. They hope he is. And in the end, I think they capitalise yeah, on this yeah, Chelsea. They, they did um, very well. But uh, going back to that point, Rod, I mean, I can't see them oh, taking their own balls. <laughs> I can't see them taking their own balls and blowing up their own balls. What's all that? <laughs> well, you have a fellow up in the terrace and, like, yeah. every time it's kicked no, up, actually, he throws, actually, up actually, throws a Chelsea ball back. Make it, making a very valid point of that, I think that they, they should use that more, shouldn't they? They what? should get more joy from that. What, I from mean, when a fellow can oh, throw do. the ball they, they, they 50 they, yards, virtually 50 yards like that, they should get much well, more they, joy they from do, they, do get, they do get quite a lot of joy from it. I mean, they, 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 they was in trouble virtually all the time that, they, uh, that he was throwing them in yesterday. Yeah. Mm. Um, now, what do you think of West Ham and Chelsea as a whole? Well, I mean, what's your views on those? Well, I think West Ham is very interesting. Obviously, this year they've had a great um, change for the better. I mean, I've always thought of them a little bit at... Um, they, well, on their day, they were going to be the best team in the country. But I felt there was a bit brittle. If you pressured them enough, they yeah. would collapse. A little bit like, I think, Leicester have gone like that. They've got similar sort of players. Yeah. But now, there's no way that's going to happen anymore. They've definitely got a lot more harder, resilient. And I think um, that match with their skillful play I think is yeah. uh, great. I think they've got a good chance now. Of yeah, they've the definitely had a lot of steel at the back. Aggression. And at the front, they're, they're, they're winning balls in yeah. areas where they never used to win they're closing, before. They're closing down well at the front. All the over. Three, the three fellas up front are working very, very hard, they extremely are, hard. Right. I mean, you've yeah. played against both teams uh, yeah. this season, Rod. What do you yeah. think of Chelsea? Well, I'd like to talk, talk about West Ham just for a brief second. I think that uh, Terry's overestimating them a little bit there. I don't, I don't think uh, West Ham will, will do very well this year. But I think they're, they're weak in the, in the part of the field, which I consider to be the most important. I think that, well, without criticising any one individual player... Changing balls at throw-ins. I think... <laughs> <laughs> I think they're, they're a bit weak well, in midfield. give mid, us a mid quick mention on, um, on Chelsea. Midfield left-hand side, eh? Hey? Give us... Still, what do you think... A, a quick mention on Chelsea, what do you think of those? Um, not a lot. You don't like it? You don't rate them? Um, well, I don't like to see them playing the way, the you know, defensive way they're playing. No, you've, got, they're, you've got to appreciate they're in a, they're, they're they're in in a situation position. now where they, they must pick up yeah, points. Yeah, I appreciate it. Tom. And if they pick up points, no. they will then pick I, up confidence I, to, to, to play a lot better. This yeah, I appreciate this is a, Every time they win two games, they've only got to lose one and they're back in again. It's a hell of a... Well, well, sorry, 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 to well, sorry to interrupt, Sorry to interrupt, but we've got to get on with some more football. And we'll have Rodney to introduce the next game. Yes, it's a third division game between Grimsby and Cholton. It's uh, Grimsby in the Stripes, and it's Ty and C's television, or oh, it's almost Ty and C's television. It's Yorkshire television, and it's Keith Macklin, the commentator. Who is chasing him? Hales! And a good save by Freeman. Hales turning well on that. Neil Freeman turning that shot from Hales round the post.
Horsfield hails. Yes, it's in now. It looks like the big blonde of Goldthorpe that's done it. Freeman stopped the first shot. Freeman got to the first one, but forced home at the second attempt. Flanagan coming up to Dunphy. Two red shirts together, Hales. Cripps, Cripps head. Grimsby in a bit of trouble now as Charlton pile on after the goal. Curtis. Cripps is up there, but headed away by Bull Dunphy. Flanagan, hit the, oh, oh, he hit the post, and Powell, Powell the clip. The defence is all at sixes and sevens, an appeal for handball, a very firm appeal for handball from Horsfield. Horsfield absolutely convinced an arm kept that out, but the Grimsby defence absolutely at sixes and sevens at the moment. comes the corner again, up goes Goldthorpe, hit the crossbar! So we've had the upright of the crossbar hit in consecutive moves. Really, this Grimsby defence, despite the acquisition of Steve Govia, is in serious trouble. That was Goldthorpe's header. So free kick to Grimsby Town. They're one goal down, this is a dangerous moment now. A chance for them to get this equaliser. They've driven for, but not too inspiredly. Churchman! It's in! Barnes finished it off, it was Churchman's shot! The Tut could only parry, so the move from the free kick worked. It was Churchman's shot as the ball was squared to him, and it was Barton who was following up to make it 1-1. Well, I think it was bad luck for Charlton there. I think they should have had a penalty. But now it's time for your letters. I've always wanted to know who the couples were at the opening titles. I always thought it was Alan Ball on his day off. But in fact, Terry tells me it was him. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> actually, we've had a letter <laughs> through from Patricia Potter of the Star and Garter, Brook Road, Montpelier, Bristol. <laughs> Dear Brian, I'm writing to let you know that the couples on the, at the clip at the beginning of the show are from Bristol. Where else? They are namely Josephine Cook, Raymond Phillips, Michael McNeil and myself, Patricia Potter. And Terry, Rodney and myself want to know if we can come down <laughs> next week. <laughs> but um, they've entered into the spirit of it and they've uh, sent a letter <laughs> and that's who they are. And now the next letter will be introduced by Mr. TV. Yeah, the next letter comes from Duncan Neil Plymouth. He wants to know who we feel is the, the, the greatest player in the world. We've all had a vote and unanimously we feel it's got to be Johan Cruyff. We feel we've got a superb bit of action to show you and here it comes right now. <coughs> here comes the ball. I find, this is why I'm a fine player. I'm the greatest player in the world. I know this. We know this. This is fine. Here you see I have uh, great control of myself. I come through on the back side. I go through, get into the box. This is good, we know this, this is fine. Um, I think we, I'm the greatest player in the world. We will win next time, I know this. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I've got to say, that's the worst that's impression just, I've ever heard. That was life. terrible. <laughs> I was, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Rodney, now it's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is even funnier. No, that's a, good, that's a good, great impression, Slip. Oh, that's all right, Wurzel. Yeah. <laughs> um, this, this letter comes from um, Charlie Farnsbarn, 37 Letsby Avenue. And he says that in the game last week against West Ham, he noticed that I didn't wear pads. And he says it's a bad example for young footballers. Well, um, I'd like to be serious for a minute and say that it is a bad example. Um, I wouldn't advise young schoolboys to do a similar thing because it, it can be quite dangerous. And. Uh, my legs have been scarred previous to this anyway, um, wearing pads early on in my career, but I thought there's no need for it. But I don't advise young boys to do it at all. Very good, very good. And would you wear shin pads on your head? Um, well, I, I don't, I don't, because <laughs> they keep sliding off. <laughs> OK, you are bad to sweep back out your head. <laughs> anyway, the last letter this afternoon is from <laughs> Jeff Cook, aged five, from 67 Wisden Road, Stevenage, Hertfordshire. He says, uh, Dear Brian Moore, 
After your interview with Rodney Marsh last week, I thought I would like to give him a Christmas present. Well, I'm going to give it to TV for Rodney. Oh, <laughs> no, a bit strong. No, I think it's a wonderful gesture. It's and about time got... someone combed his hair. But you're not really in a position well, to have a go at people's hair, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, well, no, no I, I'll no, tell you no, what, actually. I'll, give you, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll give you th this to Rodney, if I can give you a flannel. <laughs> <laughs> give it a wipe over. No, no, no. I, I, I always carry that's me over. That's very nice of you. All right, that's from Jeffrey. Thanks a lot, Billy Bull. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now on the big match again for our Where Are They Now spot. And this week's uh, Where Are They Now spot is a little bit different. Cool. I can guarantee some shocks and laughs. The fellas we're going to look at now are still playing today, so let's turn the clock back and see how many of them you can recognise. Here's the first one. Rob. <laughs> that's, that's the <laughs> FA Cup in <laughs> <laughs> oh, Seriously now, who's that? That's a rascal um, in there, can't it? That's, that's my, old, my good friend Alex Stepney. Alex Stepney, very yeah. good. Yeah. Don't try and get round. The next one? Oh, that's another oh. wake up. <laughs> it's more, more on it. He looks well, doesn't he, more? More when he was three. I don't think he was ever that young. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> hey, oh, goodness <laughs> goes, No, that's your FA Cup in 1962. <laughs> that's that's rent and ugly, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no. Oh, I didn't, think had, I didn't think he had ears. I'll guess Rodney Marsh. Yeah, oh, very good. Yeah. Oh, Next one? Up. Pass, isn't it? Oh, it's Derek pass. Pussy. Oh, yeah, definitely. It oh, I think he's having a kip there, isn't he? He oh. looks better than he does now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, oh, it's bugs, look. Oh, he won't be happy with that one. <laughs> <laughs> he won't be too impressed. But anyway, he's, he's not in the London area, so we never go. His ratings. <laughs> Rent the hamster, don't it? <laughs> oh, oh okay. Okay. Where do he keep getting his ears from? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, up, seriously. Look Peter Bonetti, yeah. Peter Bonetti. Peter Bonetti looking well there, Cat. Yeah, go. Oh, oh, Bealy! Bealy! Really? <laughs> it was Clarence, it's Clarence, Clarence the eyes. Clarence with the eyes, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> dear, oh dear. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah, it's the giraffe, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Wish I had Wish I had Very, very good, that. Very good. Look at a quiff. Like you see. Oh, <laughs> uh, Have a spot up. That's how well done the is. Spot the spot. <laughs> the spot. Malcolm. Oh, Malcolm. Malcolm. Planet of the Apes. <laughs> Oh, that's a bit strong, that. <laughs> Leave me oh, out. What's oh, that? That's true, that is. Emery oh. with a thatched head. <laughs> <laughs> God, I didn't... Oh, look at him! Oh, <laughs> no, <that> is... <laughs> Well, I it. it looks good, I'm not a bit taken Actually, we, we, we thought the other one was a wig. <laughs> the bald wig. As it is, that's what's underneath. And <laughs> it is, I just took it off. It's the first time ever, folks, I've took it off. Anyway, now it's time for the third shorts. game. But there's still a lot more to come, including another fun spot. But this third game, Terry, you will yep. introduce it. That's right, let's get very serial now. This okay. is it's Newcastle really Leeds. Serial, yes, of course. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it's on every week, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's Newcastle who leads. And uh, here we have it. This is a game at Newcastle, always find a very difficult game. It's always plenty of wind about and there's lots of atmosphere. Um, it's the pictures are from Tyne T's television. The commentator is Kenneth Walstenholm, and of course Newcastle, as we all know, are in the stripes. Finding his fellow Scott Jordan, number nine. Lorimer. Fine bit of pullback play by Natras. No luck about that. Well positioned on the goal line. Lorimer with the corner. The pushing by McQueen gives a free kick to Newcastle United. that Jordan was allowed to get away with that. Bremner. Twenty.
20 minutes gone of a match which has really been dominated by Leeds United. This is Mackenzie. Joris. Jordan and a great save. A great save from Horiba. Tremendous effort by him. McCall. It looked all over a goal for Leeds United. Doris. Good to see Alan Clark doing so much work back in defence as well as up with the attack. Caught the referee of Perla. Alan Clark winning that tackle. Alan Clark. Well, the referee seems all right, but he certainly took a nasty crack from the ball. And Kennedy. It's a beautiful goal. Twenty-three minutes gone in the second half. Once again, this young fella, Alan Kennedy, has done it for Newcastle. He got the ball, he knew if he tried to make ground, he'd be smothered by this Leeds defence. So what a perfect left foot shot, beautifully placed into the corner. Mattress to Jinky Smith. Mattress, brought down by Cherry. Smith, number 11, to take the free kick. It's there! Tudor! A beautifully taken free kick by Jinky Smith, allowed to go right across the goal mouth, and he should never have been allowed to do that. The full marks to Tudor, coming in. Seeing that he had to dive lower to hit the second goal. It's McDonald, we just need a spectacular goal from him, and that will complete a fine afternoon for Newcastle United. It's a corner kick, that was a really nasty one. A terrible one from Barrowclough. About two or three minutes left for play. Corner to Newcastle United who lead two goals to nil. Kennedy, the man who started the goal rush to take it. And it's a goal! Judah has scored. Corner by Kennedy once again, that arch opportunist John Tudor running forward to meet the ball, glancing that header which caught the Leeds defence completely on the wrong foot. Well, we're sorry about the quality of picture there from Newcastle, but uh, you can't win them all. Anyway, now it's time for the fun spot. Unfortunately, um, there's quite a number of people who think that um, we are taking the uh, <laughs> Mickey out of. Um, Professional footballers when we do these things, but uh, I don't think so personally. What do you lads think? No, I think I think it's great. I think uh, the footballers themselves they enjoy it more than anyone else. I think it's great. It's a time when everyone's a bit depressed about everything. They just want to be hit in the face with laughs and that. You know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's funny anyway. I mean, whether it's football or not, it's a funny thing anyway. In fact, uh, I think I think that you should show less football and more fun spots. <laughs> <laughs> then that is a shot coming from you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, here's our latest fun spot coming up. We haven't seen them, and we hope we're going to enjoy them as much as you.
picture. <laughs> oh, wonderful, marvellous. What do you think of them? Oh, unbelievable. Eh? Very terrific, yeah. I think Bobby Golden, the referee's got no, a the ref 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 referee, ref referee, Bobby Golden. He could tremendous. be bringing the game of disrepute here. He was yeah. having a little grope there, wasn't he? Ooh. The referee, wasn't he? Oh, the referee, yeah. yeah. A bit strong, I thought. Did you notice that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, any New Year's resolutions? Yeah, I'd like to see all the, the good things come back into the game too. I'd like to see less of the hooliganism and the, the, such like that we've had in the past. I want to see the crowds coming back and I want to really, everyone to enjoy the game because the product's good and I think that we, we want to see a lot more of the good things. Great, tremendous. Rodney? Well, my resolution has nothing to do with football, actually. It's, um... Yeah, but you can't mention that on the screen. <laughs> 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 That's I'd not like allowed. To, I'd like to genuinely see, a, see an end to all these stupid bombings and things. It upsets me a lot and I, I'm very serious about it and I'd like to... It's ridiculous. Right. Yeah, it's right. That is, I, I echo I think those all, sentiments. I think all, all yeah, footballers echo those sort of sentiments. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bit worried now. Yeah. Um, well, my one is... Um, I'm not going to bring the game into disrepute anymore. <laughs> it's too expensive. <laughs> <laughs> he said, in fact, he's even, he's even burnt his shorts. But he's frightening case he's going to get done for Arsenal. Is that, <laughs> is that strong or what? Is that too strong? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks very much, Tell. Thanks very much, Rod. A wonderful yeah, show. Pleasure, always. Love it to come on your show. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're a permissive. But we'd just like to say um, a Merry Christmas from uh, all everyone at Big Match. We thoroughly enjoyed it. We hope you do as well. And uh, we can only go out one way with Bobby Gould leading the chorus. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish...